Tony Hawkins has got a podcast. I hope he's better at this than he is washing the kit because he was fucking useless. So, episode 34. Definitely 34, I've checked. Thanks, John. <laughs> oh, I wasn't sure last week. I don't even know what day it is, if I'm being honest. No, I kept thinking today was Thursday, but no, uh, I've completely lost track. Um, I booked this week off as holiday. That's weirdly. optimistic, mate. <laughs> well, the way I see it is my holiday year finishes on the 31st of July. So I'm not going to need it for football. Oh, um, I've lost on uh, So, and I'm, I'll be completely honest, I'm not enjoying the working from home because it's not, it's not particularly working very well. Are you we still say, working then? Are you working from home? Well, I... Yeah. Are you Ross? Oh, IT issues. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. Full on, I am. Oh, yeah, I was last week, and I just got to the point. I said to my, I said to my boss, I just, I can't do this. I said, I, this is driving me mad. I'm typing things out, and then 20 seconds later, it's appearing in front of me, like it's mocking me, like you know. <laughs> um, so I thought I'll just take a week off. Why not? Fuck it. So I have this week. I've been trying to get some sort of routine. I've come up with hashtag dad dancing in your pants. I've seen that, yeah. Is it working for you? Uh, uh, for exercise. Well, the thing is, I was looking at all these things to do, the like exercise, like that Joe Wicks, is it? The I've seen him, yes. YouTube. Yeah, so I watched his. I sat there eating my breakfast watching one of his videos. And um, it's shit. That's I'm for sorry, children, though, wasn't it, that? I thought it was for kids. So. No, no, this was... I, I, watched, I watched the PE one. And a few of his, like a few of them, the OAP one, and and it's basically just a load of stretches, and it's like a warm up basically. I can see it get the blood pumping, and for people who don't really exercise that much, yeah. but yeah, I, I was just I just cannot find I couldn't find anything to motivate me to exercise, and I've been sat here on my ass, literally sat on my ass for two weeks, nearly three weeks. I couldn't do so that. So I thought, what can I do? So I put my favourite playlist on. I unboxed one of my spare smart speakers because I'm now at that stage where I've got too many <laughs> smart speakers. So I've got one on one side of the room, one on the other. I threw it on. I put me, took my dressing gown off for the first time in a week <laughs> and um, started dancing. So, yep, I, that's my exercise. An hour of dad dancing in my pants. Is the uh, it's, it's the future? I'm telling you now. That's uh, that's where it's at, mate. I know his exercise uh, is pretty good. I've also, got to be honest. put on a stone since been at home. So have you really? <laughs> Blimey. Yeah, because I was thinking clothes that were like there aren't many things that are baggy on me, but I've got a few bits and pieces. And do you remember my um, my reindeer pajamas? Yes. Well, in the space of uh, like what three weeks, four weeks. They've become they they've either shrunk or I've got fatter. Well, I mean, Turns out I've got fat. I think you've yeah, got so. fatter. We're eating pretty well, to be quite honest. We've making an effort to have. Some, yeah, me too. Yeah, something like I've, nice. I've, I've got. Uh, I've spent like 150 quid on shopping. My girls have been out and got, got my shopping for me, so I'm pretty well stocked up. Yeah. It's just perishables that are obviously the obvious issue, but you no, know, I've got loads of frozen stuff. Um, it's just bread and milk, really, that you need to keep on top That's of it. That's the problem so. bread. We're going through bread like mm. you wouldn't believe, you know, because, like, at lunchtime, because there's three of us in the house, we're all just having, like, a toasted yeah. sandwich. I mean, that's, like, you know, that's six slices right there for every lunchtime, you know, you get through it really quickly. But I'm still getting up pretty yeah, early. Yeah. I'm getting up at half five in the morning and taking the dogs out for about an hour at six, then back at seven, and then basically that's me. And then about five o'clock I go up and make sure the chickens are alright but that's quite literally you know a 30 second walk for the house so that is it for me but it's not great I got to be honest you thought it would be alright but it isn't is it really you know it's a bit rubbish if I'm being honest on this sitting about yeah it's great and now I'm not supposed to leave the house at all for 12 weeks 12 weeks that's a um, long time that yeah so I'm hoping that's 
as much precautionary as anything. Yeah. I think uh, it is. It just need the just need the people that are still ignoring the advice or the, yeah. the rules. I think that's I mean, more London, don't you think? It seems to be all right in Stony. It's ridiculous to see people walking around and meeting up in groups, five, six, seven people, and I'm mm. thinking... Idiots. They, I don't know what their mentality is, what they think. Are they thinking, I haven't got it, so I'm not going to get it? That's the only thing I can think of. But, I couldn't even begin to fathom out why people are doing that. It's just beyond me, you know, yeah. I don't know what to say. Have you written, yeah, written, I know. You only have to look at the Prime Minister to see... I know. What happens when you don't take the advice? You know, you can laugh oh, about him. his own advice. You know, you can laugh and make a joke about it, but intensive care—they don't put you in intensive care for a laugh, do they? Let's be honest. You know. No, no. but that's but that's exactly the point. The point is, he didn't follow his own advice, no, and now he's no. in intensive care. You know, he so was going around shaking people's that hands and message through to people. You know, he was saying, yeah. "Oh, I'm prepared to shake people's hands and all that kind of business." Yeah, that worked out well, mate, didn't it? For you, sir. Yeah. Mm. Oh, what can you yeah, do? Uh, we can we can take the piss, but yeah, um, I'm not taking the Mickey out of the bloke. No chance, you know. No, no. But what I mean is that you know, in all seriousness, that joke is actually the truth. Yeah. Is that you know, he's preaching to everybody to do this social distancing. Mm. Don't leave the house. Don't go and visit people who aren't from your household. You know, etc. 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 He didn't do any of that. No. Nope. And as intensive care, so people should be looking at that and saying to yep. themselves, "Fucking hell, you know that could be me." You sent me a letter carry. today. But the thing is, they don't think they're being twat. So did you yeah, get a letter that's... from him? You sent me a letter today, the Prime Minister. Yeah, I got it. Which, to be honest with you, I think that was a waste of money, and also they're spreading it more by making people post more I know. stuff. I did say that to Phil. I, I, I said, "Make I, sure I, you I, leave I, that I, for I, half I, an hour." I, I haven't had any post for two days. I was supposed to get a delivery via Royal Mail yesterday yeah. uh, before 8pm. <laughs> Shortly after 10pm, I got a notification saying it, it doesn't look like it's going to be delivered today. No shit. I've been sitting, waiting all day. I've been wanting to get into the shower, but I thought as soon as I get in the shower, you know it's going to turn up, don't you? So the highlight your day, getting a package delivered from the Royal Mail, for <laughs> God's sake. Oh, this well, is also this is also another problem with the self isolation is buying shit off the internet. No, I've not bought yeah. anything to be quite Fun, honest. I've resisted it. Funny thing about mail. Um on the JVS show on BBC V County's radio, a guy phoned up yesterday and they were doing a phone in about hygiene and, you know, beating coronavirus and a guy phoned up and said he was putting his mail in the microwave. What's he doing what? that for? To sterilise yeah, it. I mean again. Yeah. Again, it, that that makes sense to a certain extent because it's know. not a good idea. You burn your house down because there's metal stuff sometimes in envelopes. Like what? What? Um, it's like sometimes foil on that in envelopes. You burn your house down. No, well, not my house. I did. I have literally never seen foil in an envelope. I must admit, what's that matter of that? Some foil in an envelope. It's not a good Maybe idea. I posted your if foil to you. No, no, you're thinking of, you're thinking of plastic. He's he's getting mixed I'll, up to him between plastic and foil. He does it all the time. Listen, if people are your if your drug dealer is sending you your wraps in the post, mate, you want to have a word with him because you're probably going to get caught. All right, <laughs> shall we move on? Yeah. Anyway, so we talk about football. Well, just before we start, it's our mate Jonathan Harris's birthday today. Oh yeah, saw that. Yeah. Yeah, let's right, wish him birthday. happy birthday. Hey. Well, I say today, I mean, it'll be two days from now when the time yeah, this is well, out. Yeah, Wednesday. It's yeah. Wednesday today, people, if you're uh, wondering. Well, happy birthday uh, to you, mate. Yeah, so um, last week's task, which I'm going to be completely honest, is been I've been completely underwhelmed by the response. Yeah, I have, I fact. must admit. I thought compared, well, actually, I've got one. Compared to the amount of uh, responses we got to the all-time 11, so precisely one email we got. Yep. Uh, you got another one, Ross, did you say? Yeah, I'll it yeah. I've, I've got one. We'll kick off for you then, Ross, go on. Right, th this is quite an interesting hypothetical question. So, if MK Dons hadn't actually moved to MK, would MK have started up a football team? What would what would the situation be like now if Winkleman hadn't done that? It's a hypothetical big what if. But, it would you know, happen. It, it, it would still be in the same situation where we have 
where we would have had probably based on the fact that Mercedes team was pretty much going to go out of business anyway I mean it was just the arrival of MK Wimbledon to Milton Keynes just hastened that along a bit but no I think we'd be probably if we wanted to go and watch a, a reasonable reasonably decent level of football we would have all been uh, going down to Newport even now not me because there is there is no way anybody would risk based on what happened with the Mercedes team nobody in their right mind would try and get a football team of any repute started in Milton Keynes because just no one simply no one would go and watch them I thought he was Which looking to bring someone Mercedes else team. in though Tony I thought he was looking at you know, bringing other teams in before Wimbledon. He was looking at Luton for a while, wasn't he, to try and get them to come up here? Oh, I think if, if he was to bring in Luton or QPR or yeah. Barnet, um, yeah. then yeah, that's different. I mean, that that I say that's different. To me, that wouldn't be any different to bringing Wimbledon. No, doesn't matter who it is. If he if he if he brought a team along with that stadium, uh, which was always his plan. Again, I don't think. Well, uh, I think we pretty much know. He didn't really matter. It didn't yeah. really what team it was that he no. brought to Milton Keynes. It was just, what do I need to do to get people to come and watch them? And had yeah. he had that not happened, your what if being what if um, the move hadn't happened, I don't think anything would have changed, Ross. I think the uh, the Mercedes MK City team still would have gone out of business. See, historic. If you know anything, if you know your history, as they say about football in Milton Keynes it's always suffered in the same way that MK Dons does to a lesser extent people of my generation and possibly the next generation along aren't from Milton Keynes originally no, and they've all got other yeah. teams haven't they yeah and I, I do actually count myself as a Milton Keynes person because I've lived mm. here for 45 years or whatever it is but there are still plenty of people who wouldn't count themselves as, as Milton Keynes people Yeah, it's an easy place but, to mean, get what... to other places isn't it, mm. I mean you can nip down to London can't you so if you've got a London team yeah. you can easily get to London or if you're like a Villa supporter you can nip up to Birmingham in what half hour or whatever by train exactly. mm. that's a problem what, you got what I here. would say is, is if someone come up with if someone revived Milton Keynes City again or a version thereof and they managed to work their way through the pyramid then yes they would start attracting bigger crowds but I mean Newport aren't that far off the non-league top of the non-league pyramid at least well, they have a they're massive not, they have a here. massive drawback though Tony don't they what that they're in Newport Pagnell no they're playing no. in white hoops mate to be quite honest <laughs> I'm not going to go and see any team that plays in green and white hoops. I'm drawing the line at that. Yeah. yeah. The the only thing is, would would one of these sort of modern things people have done possibly created a team? You know these models at Ebbs Fleet where everybody owns a share in the club or yeah. a fan owned club or even like something like Salford City that type of thing. I mean, I don't yeah, know. You're if... talking about you're talking about a fan owned club. Yeah. Of people who uh, who are die hard or you know are proud of their city or that's where they've come from, that's where they've always lived. Uh, whereas Milton Keynes isn't like that. Another generation, and maybe two generations. Basically, once my generation is gone, I think the first generation, my my daughter's generation, the yeah. first sort of real Milton Keynes generation. Yeah, I think our kids. That's, yeah, they're now, it's having, them, they're isn't now it? having kids. My grandchildren, I think, are probably... And that, bear in mind that they're, you know, 50 years in to the birth of Milton Keynes. Yeah. My grandchildren, realistically, are the proper first... Yeah. Don't do anything but Milton Keynes. And in terms of sport and football, Milton Keynes dons. I mean, there's... I don't know if you have ever spoken to anybody under the age of sort of... 25 about uh, the move and everything. No, I don't speak to young people. I don't know when you Try not to. What about the Don's action boys? No. Yeah, we see a lot of those people you aren't see. even aware that there was a move. As unbelievable as it sounds, 
or or some of them are aware that there was a move, but they don't know all, all the details. It's yeah. really quite it's really quite extraordinary when you think about it that uh, there are. I mean, my daughter was saying, you know, I always used to think, you know, my daughter won't know what a record is. Um, you know, she won't know how to use a rotary telephone. But I said to her the other day, and she's only twenty six. You know, ask ask one of your kids to. Um, Show them a CD and ask them what it is. Yeah, what normal, will they? How to play? How to play, or find something to play it on? Even <laughs> you know that'd be quite difficult. I'm sitting there with a, a laptop that's what six months old. It hasn't yeah. got. A, it hasn't got a CD drive. Hasn't got a DVD drive. In fact, there's and I I, I took I unplugged my PlayStation Three today, and finally oh, wow. uh, I finally retired it. There is nothing in my house now that I could play a CD on. We've got a CD player on the on the kitchen on our music thing, so I don't have yeah, a cassette player. Though I've got nothing to play cassettes I, on. I, yeah, well, actually, tell her like I've got an old laptop. The laptop that this one replaced yeah. is yeah. the only thing I could play. I could now play a DVD or a CD on. Wait, but what about your current laptop? Does it have a Blu-ray drive? No, it hasn't got anything. Uh, oh, no. okay, it's a notebook then. It's got USB. It's got USBs. It's got a, a multimedia uh, slot for yeah. SD cards and that, but um, nothing for a CD. No, it hasn't even got an Ethernet port. So well, there you go. Then that's rubbish. That. Yeah. Yeah. But no. So no, no, no I mean, to your question, yeah. Ross. Nothing would have happened. I don't think. No, I don't uh, think it would have done. No. Winkman wouldn't yeah, have started someone, something. If someone did it in twenty years' time, then there might be a bit more interest. Um, yeah. Because weirdly, the strange thing is that there's huge, huge, huge amounts of kids' football teams and adult football teams. Not as many adult football teams as there used to be, but you know, in the seventies and eighties, there were dozens and dozens and dozens of football teams. But that was because of all the people coming from London, and you know, you had the, the Scottish uh, contingent uh, who tended to. Uh, it, you know, weirdly, it was a little bit like a hundred years prior when football first started uh, all the Scottish players coming in and they were clearly so much better than most of the English players in Milton Keynes yeah, not um, that pushed things along really well um, and made it really really competitive so but you know, that's a chat for another night that is that's the uh, the living archive chat that one actually yeah. that's an episode you could do you could do an episode on football in Milton Keynes before MK Dons you could get uh, some uh, people uh, involved uh, yeah, yeah, part of it. I mean, it'd be nice because that the, the Living Archive did that bit about um, uh, football in you know from the late the late sixties through to uh, the late eighties, early nineties when MK City folded. I mean, it's no surprise they were absolute shite. They were a terrible, terrible <laughs> team. I think the season they went out of business. They won one game. I remember yeah. seeing the result come through on the on the video printer. <laughs> yeah. Didn't they play uh, Wolverton uh, Works? Yeah. Wolverton Recreational Ground. Yeah, well, they did. I don't know if they played there permanently up to their demise, but yes, they did spend some time there because they played West Bromwich Albion there, I think. Did they really? really? Yeah, played West Bromwich. Yeah, yeah they, played, they played a few big teams, like pre season friendlies, that sort of thing. Um, okay. Remember, they were, in the, they, were, they were in what is the conference national? Really? Yeah. They were one step off what is now League Two. That's been happening all fucking day. What is that? <laughs> what the hell's that? Little pricks on motorbikes. Really? God's sake. Yeah, uh, see uh, a police car any second now. They're chasing them then, you think? Uh, well, they try and catch them, yeah, but one. A uh, copper stopped outside my house um, shortly before the uh, the lockdown actually, and asked me if I'd seen killing a bike. And he was quite excited. The copper, he said, "I, I, man, his bike keeps breaking down, and I got that close to catching him." <laughs> so he said, "If I keep chasing him, it, then the bike will eventually break down." <laughs> I, I'll catch him, but I thought, you know, dearie me. Right, really here's one from me then from last week. The first one I thought about: What would have happened if Robo had not played Delhi in those two Cambridge games? What do you think would have happened to Delhi? 
as I said, they um, I still haven't heard back from the media boys about the Louis interview, by the yeah. way. But I think this one is best answered by Louis in that interview. But to s- summarise, it wasn't it wasn't this whole big sort of he's come on the pitch. He's sixteen years old or whatever. He's done a back kill with his first touch. It was all pre-planned. It was all uh, part of you know Louis. Carl has spoken to Louis and he said, "We're going to bring Delhi in. We're going to ease him in. He's going to be playing for, you know, he's going to be playing in these games. We're going to start him off at Cambridge and see how things go and so on." So, I mean, the the thing is, and again, I I've always gone on about it, particularly with players like Daniel Powell when he first came along and he was playing regularly. Then he wouldn't play for a couple of games or be on the subs bench, and the fans would be moaning about. You know what? Well, he's playing really well. He should be playing every week. You can't play those young players every single week. They just physically can't do it. They well, what you've to, done there, they... there, Tony, is you've like told us what happened. What would have happened though if he hadn't? Of do you think Daly's talent would have been big enough for him to be picked up by another team, or do you think? I mean, what do you think would have happened there? Because he has a talent at football, just, and he's a world class footballer. Just, it's just... It's just a matter of time, wasn't it, really, whether it was Cambridge or yeah. whoever, you know. I remember the, in the replay, wasn't it, George Williams that scored the, the goal, the youngest ever goal scorer? I think scorer? it was, eh? No, no that, that was Nantwich. Was it Nantwich? Yeah. yeah. For me, that was a bigger event because, see, the, the major difference is, I think what we should be saying, what if George Williams had stayed? What if Brendan Galloway had stayed? Yeah, what would have happened then? Yeah, because I'm telling you now, Delhi had so many opportunities to to go elsewhere, yeah. and some really, I mean, offers from clubs that at the time I'm thinking to myself, if you don't go, I'm gonna fucking punch you in the <laughs> face, mate, because you can't turn that down, you can't turn this club down, you can't turn. But he had it in his mindset. He'd he'd come, he'd, he'd had this. I mean, let's be honest, he probably could have gone when he was 17, 18. Yeah, he like, could have gone... Like Shea Ojo, point, really. he went too soon, if you ask me. Shea Ojo did. He went far too soon, yeah, I think. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, there's, there's three there. George Williams, mm. Shea Ojo and Brendan Galloway. I mean, he's what on loan at Rangers at the minute, isn't he? But he's not good enough, to be quite honest. I mean, he's not good enough for Rangers. Yeah, and they're not pulling any trees up, let's be blunt, you know. He's just not good enough. Yeah. So, he went too soon, he did. So... George Williams is doing all right at um, at Forest Green. Um, I but think he's he, at Forest Green, well, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's but not... what if those three players had stayed and played under Carl in the same way that Delhi did? You would have think Could I mean, Carl's, God, he's a great manager, Carl. He can bring any player on. I think you said it last week about uh, Anthony Kay, didn't you? When he brought them on, they were they were better players after playing for Robo. So you know, what can you say? Yeah, because you can program a player to play a certain way. You don't necessarily make him a better footballer, per se. You make him part of a team that is better. Yeah. So, but you can't you can't take a player like Anthony Kay, who has his limitations, and say, right, I want you to get the ball on the ground. I want you to dribble around four players, and I want you to ping a fifty-yard pass. Because yeah, that's not, not his be game. Able to do that. You know, that's that, mm. Weirdly, Carl McFadden was capable of the fifty-yard ping. People didn't ever really pick up on that, but Carl McFadden had a great, a great passing range. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting to know, you know, if the, the crystal ball. If we could see what would have happened if George Williams, Shea Ojo, and Brendan Galloway had stayed. I mean, Brendan uh, done all right for a short period, didn't he? He was a first teamer at, when he was at Everton for a little while. He done all right. He came, but he came in as cover for a, for a long term injury. Yeah, I mean he did, but he, and he didn't seem out of place so Tony, did he? That, no, that broke him. That broke him because he was getting, he was quickly worked out in the Premier League, and he was made to look very silly very quickly, which is when he then got shipped off to West Brom, I think it was. Then he went to Southern. I don't even know where he is now. I have where is no he idea now? Where he is? No idea. Any idea, Ross? Uh, I'll Google it. I mean, I only know that Shea Ojo's at Rangers, obviously, because I'm a Rangers supporter, but he's yeah. he's 
he's shown glimpses, but you know, and you're playing under Steven Gerrard. He's, he's only there. Oh my! You, know. you never guess uh, where Brighton is. Where? Luton. Is it Luton? He never does, is he? Blow me. What on loan? Yeah. Um. Uh, let's have a look. On third of July, twenty nineteen. So he's been there since the beginning of the last season. Mm-hmm. He joined on a free transfer from Everton. Blow me. Well, there's a thing. Good luck uh, to them. Played, he played for them three times last season. That's poor, because they're doing really badly as well, weren't they, before the season stopped? So if he can't get in their team, he's, yeah. he's dropped right down, hasn't he? Well, it is another what if specifically yeah. for him then. What if Brendan Galloway had stayed? Would Dean learn and have played 700 odd games? Yeah, I think he still would have done. I think Dino's just. He's he's an anomaly, isn't he? Like you, you know, Lewington, and you know now nowadays kind of thing. I think he's he's a better player than Brandon Galloway. I think personally. Yeah, yeah. Checkson was another uh, one. Brendan's still only twenty four. You know. Is he really? Is that all really? age? Yes, blimey. Yeah. I'm surprised he's only that age. That's a talent wasted, doesn't it? Really, when you think about it. He went. Well, he, went he went to Everton when he was just. He just turned eighteen. Blimey. Six years wasted. That is really when you think about it, you know. But what can you say? Well, it is. I mean, I was going to say, they, if they'd have, if they'd have done what Delhi did, I mean, the thing is, in my mind, I never really, I never really asked, I never really spoke to Delhi about it. But we all knew, and he knew that something was coming for him. But and again, I, I do, I do sympathise with Brendan, Shay, and uh, George because. They're very young players, very talented, and they're being picked up by Premier League clubs. I think a lot of it is to do with the parents. Yeah, if Liverpool come knocking, you're you're not going to turn around and say, no, I'm not interested, are you? Let's be honest. Obviously not. Yeah. But, hey, What, for, for Shay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, as I say, I agree. I absolutely agree. And I think there is a certain element of that where the parents are also have to take some responsibility. Yeah, yeah. But um, Ellie, yeah, Ellie I remember didn't Ellie didn't have that connection with his mum. Yeah. Um, I mean, his dad was wasn't around anyway. He was living with Harry uh, at the Hickfords. I mean, the fact that he didn't have a great family life was probably to his advantage in that respect. I but suppose yeah. Delhi always gave the impression that he knew greatness was awaiting him. And there was no rush to get there. There was no rush. It's a very mature like outlook for someone that age. It really does. Yeah, because well, I remember. Thing, say, he, could have, he, he could have gone to any number of clubs. I, I we were at lunch and, the, and Carl called him over, and he said he said the name of a, a club. And he said they want you. Do you want to go? And Delhi immediately just said nah. And I'm telling you now. <laughs> It's a, it's a very, very big club. A I know Newcastle were sniffing about for a while, weren't they? For them, they thought they'd had them. Yeah. They? they thought they'd got them at one point. It's a bit of a different situation because I remember uh, with Shea Ojo, um, Carl alluded to his situation being slightly different from George Williams. I don't know if it was George Williams or Brendan Galloway. He sort of alluded to his pe- one one person's parents listening to him, so that's why. His oh pe- yeah, you're right. Shea I remember Ojo's. that. Yeah. I do remember I he said that like, uh, in, a, in one of those fans forums, didn't he? I remember him saying Yeah, it. he did. Yeah. yeah. What, with the parents being the deciding factor? Yeah, they were pushing yeah. him to go. Yeah. That yeah was, so... um, I, I remember, distinctly remember as well that the day it was George Williams. Yeah. Um, it was George, George Williams, George, you're right. George Williams, and I remember because uh, it was the chairman's... Well, it was Bernie, the chairman's wife, was crying her eyes out because it was such a... I don't know, I mean, I wasn't there to say what had happened, but as I say, this is what I was alluding to earlier. The parents had to take a lot of responsibility, and I'm saying that as a thinly veiled attempt to stop myself from saying it's the parents' fucking fault <laughs> that these yeah. kids go. Mm. Well, I suppose, right? Anything Whereas, else? Yeah. Do you remember Carl um, said yeah, the that Shea Ojo's parents listened to him and that's why you went to Liverpool? See, the Shea, Shea Ojo is probably, of the three, the better move because yeah. he pretty much knew what was coming for him. But now, Brendan and George... Liverpool uh, have got a good academy. I mean, 
they have. You can say what you like, but they've got a good academy. They bring players on. Oh yeah, and I, and, and I I don't think um, I don't think Shea would have gone because to be honest with you, he he's 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 not certainly now he's not any better than Delhi. I mean, at the time you probably could have tossed a coin between the two of them, but no. there was no reason why either of them shouldn't have gone to Liverpool at that point at the age they did. But you know, it just I just think. That is the, one of the biggest what ifs for me, particularly George Williams. Ask yourself this George. one. Here's another one then, just on that point. If Daly had gone to Liverpool, do you think he would have been playing in their first team at the minute? Well, not at the minute, but when they were playing. Or do you think Spurs was the right move for him? Because let's be blunt, Tony Spurs, not as big a team as Liverpool, are they? There, there, there are reasons why... No, I can't say that. No, don't, don't tell us what it is, but do you think if he'd gone to Liverpool, he would have forced his way into their first team? If Delhi had gone to Liverpool, I don't think he'd have pl- he'd have played in the first team for a considerable amount of time. No, I don't. Having said having said that, Delhi did play his way into the Spurs team, but there were mitigating factors such as an injury to a player um, who was his direct rival, uh, who was second choice as well. So effectively, Delhi was third, near maybe fourth choice. Yeah, he did play pretty position. quickly when he went there, didn't he? He played pretty soon when he went. Yeah, there. which was um, which was due to I think mainly basically an injury to a, a player that would have been uh, in his place, who now is not playing anymore. Sadly, he's uh, had to retire because of a is it a head injury? Who? Mason. Oh, I don't know who you're on about. R- Ryan Mason. It was a heart issue, I think. Heart. Blimey. Yeah, Ryan Mason. He was the. He's the one that had to retire, isn't he? Because of uh, was it a head injury? He's just I said a dodgy it... heart. Uh, Ryan Mason. Right, while you're doing that, I'm going to ask another one. You yeah. ready? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, it was head injury. Yeah, you were right, yeah, Tony. He Sorry. A fractured skull against Chelsea. Oh my. Yeah, so Ryan Mason got injured, I think, at Spurs, and Delhi came in, did a pretty good job, and had a few substitute appearances as well. So, I mean, it was always going to happen, but like you are, it's a great question, John, because which club would have which which club would have done what they did with Delhi? Yeah, I don't I think, think Liverpool would have done. I think Spurs were more likely to have given Delhi that opportunity, yeah. but at the same time. I don't think it was by design that he is where he is now. Oh, no, I thought but, I don't know. Uh, it's a, it is, it's a really yeah. good question. It's a really good question. Well, I mean, it's the same with uh, Liverpool, where Trent Alexander-Arnold may not have got his chance if Klein wasn't injured. Precisely, exactly. And he's probably uh, one of the top, or has been in the, in the top, definitely the top ten Premier League uh, yeah. fullbacks for the best part of a year now yeah, he's so. a brilliant player Definitely. he is he really is right moving yeah. on here's another one you ready yeah what would have happened on that final day when we were playing Yeovil and we were about to go up to championship if rather than losing Preston had a won what would have happened to us in, in the playoffs do you think it was the most terrifying 90 minutes of my life <laughs> for various reasons that was <laughs> I was totally unprepared for the playoffs in terms of being able to uh, supply the players enough kit because we simply didn't have we, we barely had one set of training kit per player let alone two or three that would be required for a, a week away at um, at St George's which is what the plan was I can't remember who, we, who would we have played we would have played I can't remember mate I can't no idea I should, have done, look at I should have done some research that, that really year. What was it? 2015, 2014, 15, 14, wasn't it? 15, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, League One, 2014, 15 table. Right, yeah, so. So, we would have finished third. Uh, yes, yeah, so we would have finished third. We finished second. So, Preston, who they were the eventual winners, rightly so, of the playoffs. Uh, so, we would have been playing Chesterfield. We would have beat them easily. We fluked a couple of wins against them that season, if I remember right. It was that the season we lost to them in the FA Cup when we had to replay the game because they played a ringer in the first game. Oh, we did play anyway, someone anyway. Uh, the other two teams, Swindon and Sheffield United. 
think the only trouble we would have had there would have been Sheffield United. I think we would have we'd already battered Swindon, hadn't we? Well, weirdly, uh, the in the playoff semi-finals, Preston beat Chesterfield one nil, then three yeah. nil. Um, Swindon. No, I don't remember this right, but Swindon beat Sheffield United two one in the first leg, and the second leg was five all. Oh, I so Swindon went through. I can't remember remember that. Yeah, quite then honest. Preston Preston beat Swindon four nil in the final. Did they really? Uh, I was under the so, impression that Swindon had dropped out of the playoffs. That shows you what I know. Nothing basically. Well, we we basically destroyed their chances of automatic promotion oh, yeah. that day. We. Won. Nailed, they, it was on the telly last week, weren't they? They put it up, didn't they? The old media team put it on yeah. YouTube, didn't they? Which was a, a bit of karma for them throwing out a team of um, nobodies yeah. that lost to Peterborough. Do you remember that? I do because remember were... it, yeah. So the question is, would we have gone through in the playoffs? I don't think we would have done just because of our playoff record is so bad. No, I think we would have done. I think we had a really strong team. that never had a stronger team. I think we would have had enough to get through the playoffs. I really do. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't up to us if we um, went up that day or not. It was entirely to do with Preston, yeah, what was, they yeah. did. Um, so we didn't actually get promoted that day. Preston let us get promoted they did. to a certain extent. So uh, I mean, the no, planning must stag- have been though to go into the playoffs. Staggering. That must have been the plan. Yeah, it was a staggering. I mean, the as I said, uh, as I've said in previous podcasts. The the Tuesday before was the Player of the Year Awards where the chairman had said, don't worry about promotion, let's forget about promotion, just get me those four goals to get us to 100 for the yeah. season. So, And if anything, we were, in the, we were in the better position anyway because it was never expected that we'd go up no, automatically. It wasn't, so. uh, right, speaking of it going up automatically, here's another one then. What would have happened last yeah. season then if David Wheeler hadn't have scored that, that goal against Mansfield? What would have happened then? Do you think we would have gone up, or do you think Tisdale would have completely and utterly bottled that? Because that's what I'm thinking would have happened. I would have think we'd still have been in League Two if we hadn't gone up automatically last season. Do you know what? With hindsight, I think you're probably right. I really do, and I'm not saying we would have done a Chesterfield, but it's a possibility. It, it, it is a possibility. Uh, I mean, we'd have been in the playoffs, remember? Yeah. As well, so. I mean, we weren't a particularly good team to watch. We weren't. We were terrible. We had the that I think one of the like, top three budgets that season, didn't we, or something like that? Something and like that. Eh? There's no reason why we shouldn't have got automatic promotion out of that league. We scraped it in the end. We should have gone up as uh, champions. We just we should have done. I mean, I can't now sitting here now, almost a year later, still can't figure out why we were so bad. Well, we were so bad because he wasn't a good enough manager, basically. I mean, that's, we're, we're, yeah, the, football you know, was, uh, the football was awful, wasn't it? Was it? Absolutely awful. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't think we would have gone up. I think we would still have been a League Two team at the minute. I really do. Yeah, and how long do you think uh, Tisdale would have lasted the next season then? I think he would have lasted possibly about the same because he was so dogmatic in his, like, in his philosophy of football that he just cannot change his philosophy, that guy. Well, you seen it, didn't you? Yeah. You know, that day that he got the sack, you know? I mean, there's another one. What would have happened if he hadn't have taken off two midfielders and put two defenders on? <laughs> you know, to hold on to a three. <laughs> you know, to hold on to a three nil loss. What would have happened? I mean, I don't know. He's just, you know, I mean, he was the right man at the time, but we shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have gone down to the last game. It just shouldn't have done. No way should it. You know what can you say? Uh, no, it shouldn't. It shouldn't have done. Mm. Um, should we have a look at a couple of uh, these ones that have come through from Dan? Yeah, go on, Dippy I forgot Don. all about him. Yeah, go on. Uh, Dippy Don's got uh, a few here. So, what if Ince and Andrews had stayed for the 8-9 season? Would we have gone up or would we have been good enough to challenge promotion? Uh, or would we have even been good enough to challenge for promotion? So, we're keeping Ince and we're keeping Keith Andrews. We, I reckon we would have gone up. We'd still lose, we'd still lose Sam Bulldog. Alright, fair enough. Uh, oh, no, let's say let's say we kept Andrews, Ince, and Bulldog. I reckon we would have gone up because we were pretty close to it, weren't we? Under Di Matteo, don't forget. Yeah, I think that's a fairly straightforward uh, answer there, isn't it? It's, I reckon we would have gone up back to back promotions. Yeah, I think we could have. 
all these years of hurt could have been avoided. But Speaking of it, Keith, he's of... got a new gig, hasn't he? Keith Andrews. He's, Has he? What's he got? He's is he? in the backroom staff of the Irish Republic team now. They've got a new manager, and he's been moved up from the academy to not assistant manager, but assistant oh, right. to the assistant. I know he was, um, I know he was doing the under 15. He was doing the under 18s, yeah. I've checked it tonight. So he's so good yeah, luck to I him. fixed him last week. He hasn't replied, the shithead. He's so. too busy, Tony. He's coaching He's Irish obviously folks. far too important to talk to the likes of me, that's for sure. Mm, too busy f- for you, Tony. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you uh, know. One, it goes, uh, are we done with that one? Yeah, done with that. I think we would have gone up. Yeah. If we'd won the penalty shootout against Scunthorpe, do you think we'd have built and beaten Millwall in the final? No. I think Millwall were a very good team that season. They were very, that very season, good. Yeah. yeah. I think that was their year. Yeah, I know we beat them 4 0 at their place. We didn't did, we? yeah. But <laughs> that was a day they, and a half. We're not lucky to get out of our life Saturday. Yeah, they came back to our place and played us off the bar. I think they, they beat us 1 0 that night, though, didn't they? It was a Tuesday night. It was wasn't a it? Tuesday, yeah. Uh, I think they only beat us 1 0, but they played us off the pitch, yeah, if I can remember. I don't think so, we had enough to get no, I don't think we would have done Diffy Don. I think we would have lost that final. I just don't fancy us in any playoffs, if I'm honest. No, I uh, don't really. What if we had scored one more goal in the second leg against Huddersfield? Would we have won in extra time, stroke penalties, or would it have been too much for us? Then if we did win, would we have gone on to win against Sheffield United in the final? Um, uh, difficult to see. I mean, again, I... I, I, I would have fancied our chances against pretty much anyone. I mean, the Hudders, Huddersfield, again, was a surprise that they didn't go up automatically. Yeah, they were a good team that season. Yeah, they were a very good team. And Sheffield United, again, we were a good side. We were a very good side. We weren't as you know, good as either of those uh, two teams, Otona. They were better than us. I, I don't think no, we would have yeah, got I think we I think it'd have been I think it'd been a close run thing if we'd have got yeah. to the playoff finals. Playoff final, but I mean I'm it's not a one off sure game and it you know, you can't just go by you know, you can't go by your league form, can you in these things? I mean look how many teams that finish third and don't go up, you know. Mansfield, for example, you know, they just that's just how it is. The players well, are look lottery, at, um, I mean, that's one of the ones on our list, isn't it? The the what ifs. What if Gleason wasn't sent off against Peterborough? I mean, that was probably oh, yeah. That that was the one I I said yeah. Yeah, that was probably our best performance by a mile. Uh, that home game against Peterborough. I'll tell that you what would have happened. We still wouldn't have given up because I think yeah. Peterborough had too much for us that season. They really did. But the thing is, we we outplayed them at home. We did. And had 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 we scored ten seconds before that penalty was given and scored, yeah, we'd have been three one up instead of two all. Oh, I suppose, so, yeah, yeah, that is but, that. Yeah, you know, and what if Gleason had taken the bloke out on the on the halfway line, which is what I was screaming at him at the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if it had taken him out there and then taken the yellow, he wouldn't. But instead, he carried on and he took him out, albeit unfairly got red carded for it and gave a penalty which was outside the area you know but if we'd have put our chance away up the other end 10 seconds prior to that yep. you know yeah. these, you could, all these what ifs just lead on to more what ifs really what it, don't they it's a good conversation <laughs> that's it really is yeah, yeah, yeah that was one hell of a match though wasn't it oh we were so good in that yeah. I mean we absolutely destroyed the best team in that league because we weren't the best team that season they were they by were some distance team, yeah. In terms of football, I mean, obviously they didn't get they didn't get all make promotion. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been playing off. The, uh, no, yes, but we so. know good Peterborough teams have been over the years, and mm. it hurts to say it. But you know, they, again, this season, where would they be now if the season hadn't finished uh, or hadn't been suspended mm. uh, a few weeks ago? Because they were on a run again, weren't they? They were, they were picking up they again. Were again yeah. Yeah. They do blow hot and cold most seasons. They but... managed to hold on to that Ivan Tony. I think that was a big thing for them, wasn't it? So, yeah. Well, that's really weird. That's got to be the player has fucked that up because they basically had pretty much signed it off. But it sounds like the player was maybe arguing about wages or something. So, mm. uh, Diffy then says, uh, "What if Benikafobi stayed for the season? Would we have gone? Would we have gone?" in our slump would we have beaten Bristol City at home would we have been in a better place to keep him permanently that summer uh, sadly not no, no I we couldn't so. afford him Tony he was t- I mean, you, you know 
We couldn't afford a player like that. We couldn't afford to buy. Him. No, he wasn't. He was. He wasn't our player. He was never going to be signed or sold to a uh, a League One club. He was nah. just, like, say, too good. And even though Arsenal only got a million quid for him, that no, there was no way we could have signed Benikafobe. Nah, and I don't think we'd have beaten Bristol City. Bristol City were head and shoulders above everybody that they season. They were a good team that season. Can't fault them. Well, a good team this season as well. They're doing all right, quite honest. Yeah, I mean, they were... I remember going there and being comprehensively outplayed by them. It was very comfortable for them. So, no, I don't think we'd have got Benick and I don't really think it would have made a lot of difference to our season. No, I don't think so, you know. Here's one. This sort of ties in with one that I made a note of. Well, what if we'd stayed up in 15-16? Uh, would we have gone down the next season or did you trust Carl has a plan of what he wanted to do in the championship so I am thinking this could tie this in what with what if Carl wasn't sacked when yeah. he was sacked All right. Uh, so I think if we'd have stayed up that season we definitely would have gone down the following season definitely no doubt about it straight down because that is what happens yeah that is Look <laughs> and about the only club that have actually gone against that trend yeah. but they only hold on for another couple of seasons but yeah. in general the team that comes up from League One if they do manage to stay in the first season they will generally go the following season I mean, so Peterborough didn't they did it they they managed to stay up didn't they and in the following season they just got annihilated didn't they I remember it yeah so I think that would have been us it I think that would have been, been us get and it's happened, to, it's happened to so many teams yeah. in the recent past uh, as I say, Burton are the only ones that have actually really gone against that rule. Uh, they stayed up for three or four seasons, didn't they, Burton, uh, before they came back down to League One. So, uh, yeah, so what if we uh, we get relegated like we did? What if we hadn't sacked Carl when we did? Now, I, I have to say at this point, I've always said that I think it was the right decision at the time. Yeah. Although I enjoyed doing it or, you know, the... And we've suffered for it ever since. But what if Carl was allowed to stay? And I say, I just want to reiterate, I don't think it would have been the right decision at that time, the way things were. I mean, I don't know, because you've you've got the better... Well, you've got the better outlook on it, haven't you, being on the inside of it? But I always thought at the time that it was a mistake to get rid of him. But, I mean, listening to what you've said, I think, in retrospect, it was the right thing. If he had stayed, I don't really know what to say, you know, because he was... I mean, he was another one that seemed pretty set in his ways, didn't he? That just wouldn't change, you know, would he? I, I couldn't, you know, I don't know what to say, you know. It yeah, just wasn't the working, way, was it? The way that I, you know, I, I was in the fortunate position of, of being there and it felt like something had come to an end or something was coming to an end. Yeah. And the final bit of that was Carl going because the, the that squad that we'd had, uh, Delhi had gone, we didn't get to sign Lewis Baker, the season of the championship it was a bit of a disaster in terms of signings and the ones that we did get didn't perform particularly uh, Simon Church, Nicky Maynard the same in League One it just felt like it was like the just the all the shit after such great times yeah, and it wasn't great, all the was things it? have to come to an end it's just how you get on with the aftermath of that and I think because it was Carl's first time round he didn't quite know, or none of us really knew, because we were all quite green, you know. I mean, obviously, there's, there's a few players that have been in and out of that squad that had witnessed success. But as a manager, Carl had no experience of that kind of failure, getting, you know, getting relegated from the championship. Mm -hmm. But the way we performed in League One the following season was actually worse in my mind anyway yeah, it was actually more disappointing than, than the championship Absolutely season because dreadful. we terrible. weren't really perfect, expected to do too much in the championship no. and we didn't and in again nothing changed and if you ask me straight out where do you think it went wrong I'd be absolutely honest with you and say I don't know because if I did I wouldn't have been a kit man I wouldn't nope. be sat here on my arms doing a podcast I'd be making millions or advising managers uh, on on making the right decision. So, um, but what do you think if Carl hadn't been sacked? What do I think? I think it would have gone pretty much the way that it did go. I think we would have eventually got relegated to League Two, and I think quite possibly 
it would have been that season rather than the rather than the next season. It just wasn't so working, Ross, was you, it? What what season did you? What was your last season watching, Ross? Um, it was 2012-2013, so that was the season that was just meaningless mid-table stuff. What, where we finished 12th, was it? Yeah, that was it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was a bit of a disappointing so season. Carl's second season, season was it? Carl's uh, second season? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, so we might have finished 8th then, I can't remember anyway, but yeah. yeah. 12 or 8 or something, but it definitely wasn't the playoffs, was it? I know that. Definitely no, no, like... no. It, that, that, that was a meaningless season. So really, you don't have any... Because it really didn't even kick off until another, another year after that, yeah, did it, really? Yeah, you know, another year after so that, before it started going. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, you, you do see things from afar, and sometimes <coughs> managers do run, you know run their course or run out of steam um, yeah. but then I don't know because you know sometimes the great managers keep it up um, that's the thing isn't it yeah. that's what I'm saying if you can if you can you know get relegated like we did from the championship and then just basically get on with what you need to get on with but it all just felt a little bit it just felt a little bit again I said, the only way I can describe it is that it felt like everything had come to an end. Yeah. Nobody quite knew what, what was going on or how to yeah. deal with it. Which is why I think it was the right time that I think it was the right decision for Cole to go because it, he hadn't run out of ideas, but what he was doing wasn't working. And I don't think we had the right players and mm. it just had to be started all over again. And I mean, you yeah. Like, JT, you've been there since Carl left. We're really now. I mean, and we've only had Russell since just before Christmas. Yeah. Things are looking better, but we're still. I mean, we're still like fourth, fifth from bottom away. We is. are. I mean, I would think that if we'd had Russell a little bit earlier, I think we would have been higher up the table. But, I mean, I mean, it's oh, arbitrary now, my, isn't it? Because basically, is my, is, is my favourite what if then? Go on. And I know we've I've asked you this question before. I'm sure I have many times. But what if Nielsen got sacked in the October when we drew four all with Oldham at home? What if we'd lost to Oldham that day? And it, I think the chairman would have sacked him that day. I genuinely do. Really? I genuinely do. Yeah. I don't. And 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 again, not because I was there. I just. It Even just, though I sat on the bench with him, just it's a terrible working, thing to it? say, but I didn't want him managing my football club. No, he was and I say that as a fan, not as an employee of his. He's the and, worst. Uh, he, his. he is the worst thing that's ever happened to this club. He set us back by, like, years, that bloke. He really did. I mean, he just so do you did. think that he actually made it worse than it already was? It yeah. wasn't... Yeah, he made it yeah. much worse than it was. Yeah... I mean, yeah, it's, it, 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 well, here's a what if. What if you were still kept, man, Tony? That's a good one. <laughs> what if I was still kept, man? Well, we wouldn't uh, be doing this for a start, would we? Good point, good point. <laughs> thing, thing, things, would, things would be different. Again, it's really difficult to try and explain to you what that means, but things would be different, yeah, they would be. Right, I'm going to ask one last question and then, because we've done an hour. Do you think, yeah. going back to Robo, do you think he's a better manager now than when he was with us? The reason why uh, I'm saying it, the reason why I'm asking that is because I don't think that Oxford have got as, as good a team as we had when we went up and they are, well, they were in the playoffs before the season was suspended. So do you think he's a better manager? Because he's managing players that are not as good as the ones he had when he was with us. Do you know, I, I disagree with you there to a certain extent because he's got some spectacularly good players in key positions like he did with us. He's got Matty Taylor. Uh, he's got the lad up front that he got from Charlton, which still is a major surprise. I mean, he's got a few players in the, uh, in the League One team of the season. They're not um, as good as the team that we had, Tony. Nowhere near it when he was I when we I, went up. I think I think you're probably right, but the way that he's working it is exactly the same. What will what will what will be able to gauge how 
he's improved or not improved as a manager is if and when things go wrong. Yeah, because he was very, he must have been incredibly close to being sacked last season he must when have they been, were bottom. Because they weren't happy with him, were they? The fans had no, turned against him already. They held on to him. He was very vague when I asked him, "Why the fuck didn't you get sacked?" <laughs> um, but they they obviously there was a reason why they didn't sack him. It was a great surprise that he didn't get sacked, and we saw in the space just before the season uh, was suspended, we saw them go from eighth to second in yeah, about three weeks, back didn't up, we? Didn't they? Straight back up there after their all their FA Cup exploits and cup games against God knows who and yeah they had a pretty uh, old season didn't they you know yeah I mean one thing I one thing I will one thing I will say is that he will never stop being a very very good coach There's, you think he's a better coach then and he is manager then Tony well he enjoys coaching you think a lot can... of managers a lot of managers find that they don't have time to coach when yeah. they're managing. To their own disappointment, they they do want to be on the training pitch. They want to be involved with training. Carl does that, and he loves it, and he absolutely loves coaching. He needs to. What I will say is, he needs to keep up with what's going on in football. Again, quite difficult to explain. But if if you, as a boiler person, if you didn't receive training on, if you're training on the updated boiler of today was the last time the last time was in 2005 you would be you know someone said you go and fix that boiler that was made last year yeah I'd be 15 right, years out of date you. wouldn't I look yeah so there's a fine line between being able to go and coach when you're a manager without being you know because it's going to be difficult for people especially with Carl if you if he, if he's on your if he's on your training pitch and he's doing a coaching session and you don't think he's doing it right or you think that his methods are outdated I don't think there are a lot of people that would tell Carl that. You don't think? <laughs> I don't think so. No. That's one of the reasons I asked Russell that question when we did our interview. Yeah, I remember he said he wants that, didn't he? Yeah, and it's important yeah. managers be told when they're being fucking idiots. Yeah. Really important. You can't be a yes man all the time. No. Because yeah. Well, a- anyone needs saving from themselves. Steve's job. Steve Jobs did. Yeah, and uh, that was one of the reasons why Carl brought in John Gorman, because yeah. the man just absolutely commands respect, and there's no way that anybody is not going to listen to what John John Gorman's got to say. And for me, that was the that was the best decision Carl ever made was bringing in John Gorman. For that yeah. first season, two seasons, because there's a lot of Carl's got a very big ego, and I don't know if it's the right phrase, but sometimes he just won't be told that you know, or people won't tell him that he's wrong. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see because that disappointment of the relegation and then getting sacked, which we you know we always thought that he'd be taken away by another club, but yeah, he didn't think he'd get sacked. That's a good point, isn't it? Yeah. Always thought we'd lose him to someone else, not that we'd eventually have yeah, to sack him. And again, him. there's another one. He could he could have gone could have gone on numerous occasions yeah. to some some uh, some bigger clubs that he turned down. But, right, I think we'll yeah. start. We'll wind it up then at the minute because huh? that's right, been well, another. We got one more from Dippy Don. Oh, which one I more then. Go on. Straight, okay. Straightforward. Uh, what if Chelsea hadn't broken their promise uh, to for us to keep Lewis Baker for the Championship season? How do you think we'd have done if we just added him to that final squad? I think. We'd I just... don't think it would have made a lot of difference. No, to I be think honest. we would have gone down. We just weren't good enough. Yeah, one one man one man was not going to do that. Uh, and one of you two said, "What if Broughton missed the penalty?" Yeah, I don't think. I think it, it was you. Yeah, it was me. I don't think it would make a lot of difference to the actual how, you know, we would still have got up that season. You know, it would just have been, you know, we wouldn't have gone to Wembley. Basically, that would have been what would have happened then. Yeah. We were, we were, we, you know, we do you know what was the bigger, the biggest achievement that season for me was beating Swansea. Yeah. Um, not the not the promotion. It was the beating Swansea because they were. I mean, we've seen them over the years, haven't we? Like South, yeah. Southampton, Leicester, Leeds, all in League One, clubs that are just massive. And Swansea just absolutely, not just because they were a big club, but 
the football they played, they were just oh yeah, head and shoulders above absolutely everything. Yeah, and Martinez is well, manager. My don't biggest forget. regret, my biggest regret as a Dons fan, is not letting my daughter go to the home leg of the Johnsons Pate semis because I was convinced we were going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want her to go through that pain, but it turned out it was one of the best nights. Certainly, for up to that point, it was the best night ever as a Dons fan. I remember those memories. Uh, I couldn't watch them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's our what if episode. That's it, right. Next week, I'm struggling to find things to think about, but what I thought we'd talk about is what we think is going to happen basically to the league because there is 100% there's going to be teams that are going to go out of business with us, or just us. Yeah. So that's what we'll talk about next week. I know that will be supposition, but I yeah. think we'll be a bit further on next might, week, won't we? We might yeah. have a better idea next week of yeah. what the <coughs> Years or at least a time scale, maybe. I think a decision's got to be made based on when they think it'll be. If they think it'll be safe to play behind closed doors, I think they'll make that decision, and I think they'll go with it. They have to. Honest, you know, the government have to, to tell us. Everybody, everybody wants to see the season finish, with the exception of Bolton, South End, yeah. um, you know those sort yeah. of teams. But let's be honest; those teams are just. They're already going down anyway, so yeah. for them to continue really isn't going to make a huge amount of difference. So I think they'd rather get the season out of the way. But yeah, we might have a better idea this time. Yeah, next we'll week talk about that next week. That's happen. just something to, yeah. you know, what's going to happen, which teams we think are going to be in the in it, which ones we think are going to be strong enough for, if any of them. But we will have a better i a better idea this time next week. What you know, because I think to be quite honest with you, in the next week this is only going to get worse this it's not going to get any better it's going to be significantly worse in the next no. week isn't it I think so. well yeah I mean it's going to be tipping over a thousand for the next couple of days yeah, I mean, now, it was 900 700 today was it I can't think a lot no, no 978 was it 900 I knew it was a lot so you yeah know. so the day hasn't finished yet either I so. know this is the other thing mm. well that's yesterday isn't it they're, they're, yeah, they're a day behind with the, with the, with the figures so that yeah, was yesterday. Yeah. Well, uh, someone else I know has got it's just recovered, so that's good. Well, that's good news. Right, we'll uh, wrap it up there, and next week we'll see which ones we think are going to be in the crap, and hopefully it won't be us. Yeah, and we'll do uh, we'll do Rogers all time eleven. Yeah, yeah, it was week, too late right? with that, wasn't it? That came in like this morning. Well, didn't well, Rogers is in a couple of hours late for uh, last week. <laughs> oh, did he? In fact, if we finished the pod, we finished recording the podcast before shortly through. before he sent his <laughs> eleven in. So we we'll do yours. We'll do your eleven next week, Rog. <laughs> so if you'd like to chip in and tell us what you think will happen when if if and when, I mean that's a big if if it'll even start again or if it's just going to be like an old. But yeah. we'll talk about that next week. And if you've got a what if that we missed, you think would be worth discussing, or you've got a theory on, let us know as well because. Um, I mean, we obviously haven't covered all the what ifs, but uh, is uh, yeah. I mean, we could fill a several hours podcast with uh, what ifs, couldn't we? We could. Right, so that's yeah. us for this week. Right, yeah. We'll see you. Are you in next week again, Rossi? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was quite good fun, this. Yeah, it's I been mean, all even right, though there's it? like gaps in the knowledge, you're filling it. So yeah, yeah it's good. Good stuff. Right, anyway, uh, we'll see you all next week then. And just yeah, before bye. we go. Make sure you stay in. Don't go out. I'm warning you. Everyone, not yeah, just yeah. Tony. Don't forget, <laughs> Dad dancing in your pants. Yeah, don't don't forget to do that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, I love it, mate. Love it. Right, see you next week. <laughs>